Hi, today we are going to be going over a problem from the Romanian Mathematical Olympiad. This was a number 3 problem in round 2 in 1997. The problem says, let A be the set of positive integers represented by the form A squared plus 2 B squared, where A, B are integers, integer numbers and B is not equal to 0. Show that if P is a prime number and P squared is in A, then p is also in a. Well, if you do want to give the problem a try, you can pause the video and do so now. But the problem essentially states in a less notation heavy way, if you have integers such that p squared equals, well, uh, let's call the integers a1 squared plus 2b1 squared, then prove that there must exist two integers such that p equals a2 squared plus 2b2 squared. Obviously here b1 and b2 can't be 0 by the condition here. How will we go about trying to prove this? Well, uh, the number one rule in number theory, or at least elementary number theory at least, is always sort of factor. You can never go wrong factoring really. How are we going to try to factor any of these? Well, we know that this is a given condition so we should start from here and try to proceed to here somehow to factor this i can simply write p squared minus a1 squared equals to 2 b1 squared and obviously this can be factored as p plus a1 p minus a1 equals to 2 b1 squared right I've, i'm in a good spot now i like factoring and this could be insightful. But before we step any further, let's note that well, p equals to 2 is also a prime, and it's actually the only even prime. I note that I have a 2b squared here, so maybe I could know the parity of a somehow. Well, if let's just say p was 2. Let's try to look at this case individually. Well, is p squared, which is equal to 4, is it in a? Actually, it's not. You can't write p squared as a squared plus 2b squared. So the case for p equals to 2 is trivial. It's not in the set. We don't need to worry about this. We can assume that p is odd now because, well, all primes greater than 2 are odd. So now if we have an odd number squared, which is, again, odd, equal to some number plus 2 times some number, so that means this is even, well, that forces a1 squared to be odd. That would also force a1 to be odd. So now we have p plus a1 odd plus odd. This is even and this is also even. All right. Well, now that we've got it factored and well these are this is a prime. Let's not, let's keep that in mind. This isn't just any number that we've factored. We can try to maybe use the Euclidean algorithm to find the greatest common denominator. This is actually quite a common trick in Olympiads when you have a factorization. Because, well, if, for example, p plus a1 and p minus a1 were co-prime, the problem would have been destroyed easily. You could just set them equal to one of the factors here, but they're not. So we, we've got to find the greatest common denominator. Well, the greatest common denominator of p plus a1 and p minus a1, we can add these by the Euclidean algorithm, add these two to get 2p. So the, which this would be equal to the greatest common denominator of p plus a and 2p. Well, there exists no number that divides 2p besides 2, and this is by the nature of p being a prime. So only 2 could be a possible uh, factor, and that's actually the biggest factor besides p. We know that p doesn't divide this, but we also know 2 divides this, because p plus a is odd. And nothing greater than 2 divides 2p, so we can therefore say that the greatest common denominator of p plus a1 and p minus a1 is actually 2. Right then, uh, what can we do with this information? We know that, okay... I've got p plus a1 times p minus a1 equals to 2b1 squared. I know that the greatest common denominator of these is 2. So there's a factor of 2 here and nothing greater than 2. And there's a factor of 2 here and nothing greater than 2 that they share. Right then, 
uh, how would two numbers multiply to give me 2b1 squared? Um, well, I could have, uh, let's say, I could have k squared times 2n squared. That's one example because that would give me 2nk whole squared, right? And I think that's the most general form. One thing to note now is that p plus a1, this is even, p minus a1 is even. We know that only one of them could be divisible by 4. The other must be divisible by at most 2 by the nature of the greatest common denominator being 2. So let's let's just assume that, let's say without loss of generality, p plus a1 is divisible by 4, let's just say. That means p minus a1 is actually not divisible by 4, but rather it's divisible by 2. Righty then, how would we decompose this now? I know that, okay, I can write 2n squared and I can write k squared. And now how do we also make it match these conditions? Well, I can say that k squared, for example, I can say that k squared, or rather, I could say n squared is odd. Let's say n is odd, right? And then I have a factor of 2 here. Then 2n squared would be even, and it's the biggest factor of 2. Oh, sorry, the biggest power of 2 that divides is, is 2, 2 to the power 1. So I can say that this matches with this condition. I can say k is now even. So k squared would be divisible by 4. So I can set this equal to this. Let's see what that gives us. We can say, oh, this is just case 1, by the way. We're going to do case 2 later. We can say that p plus a1 equals to k squared, where, of course, k is even. And p minus a1 equals to 2n squared, where n is odd. Righty then, we've gotten, we've gotten p here rather than p squared, and well, we can actually add these two equations up to get an equation for p. Let's see what that gives us. Adding these two gives us 2p equals k squared plus 2n squared. That's a bit similar. That's like, that's actually the exact form that we're looking for, but this is 2p, not p. Hmm. Well, note that k was even. k was even, so... I can say k is equal to 2m for some m, and that would give me 2p equals 4m squared plus 2n squared, and dividing both sides by 2, I actually get that p equals 2m squared plus n squared. And hey, that's exactly the form that I'm looking for to prove that p is actually going to be in a. So that's case 1 done. That was the case where 4 divided this factor. Let's check case 2. Case 2 would be 4 divides p minus a1, and 2 divides p plus a1, and no power of 2 bigger than 2 divides p plus a1. Alrighty then, as we know, I can decompose 2b1 squared as 2n squared times k squared. I can set n equal to an even number, and that, or sorry, n equal to an odd number, and that would make 2n squared even with no factor greater than 2. And I can set k squared equal to an even number, and that means that this must be divisible by at least 4. So I can put this equal to this, and this equal to this. And if you do notice, well, it doesn't really change anything, because, well, I have p minus k1 equals k squared, and now I have p plus a1 equals 2n squared, adding them up again like we did last time. You get 2p equals k squared plus 2n squared, Again, k is even, so k must be 2m for some m, and you get p equals to 2m squared plus n squared. Again, p is in a. And that actually proves our claim. That was it, really. The key part was, again, a fundamental thing in number theory to always factor. If you're ever stuck, always factor. You can, you can always get insights from factoring, and this is actually what uh, a an Olympiad uh, coach for the US national team even said once in a video to always factor in number theory. We got we factored this and well since we had a pretty interesting factorization we could try to find the greatest common denominator. Usually you try to prove well either one of these is co-prime to the other or you try to prove well the greatest common denominator is some constant that you can figure out. 
we proved that the greatest common denominator was 2 and that meant we were able to decompose this and set each factor equal to a part of the decomposition. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you do want to see more Olympiad problems like this or just explanations please do subscribe and comment some problems you want to see me solve. I'll promise to try to upload more frequently now.